Okay, the debate rages on. Birds, where do they come from? Oh, I got these from Oscars. Uh, buffalo wings? Yeah, they're deep fried and triple hot, won't it? Uh, no thanks. Oh, come on, I got you the extra sauce. Save me a couple later. Now, let's get back to our case. I don't know. We keep hearing these different ideas, but are we getting closer to solving the mystery of the birds? Cheer up, kid. That's what makes paleontology so exciting. There are still so many mysteries to be solved. You're right. And I guess we can feel good about one thing, at least. We still know more about birds than they know about us. Okay... Now, let's watch that cartoon again. It just looks too easy. I mean, why would Deinonychus just sprout feathers and wings and start to fly? I don't buy it. As usual, Bob Bakker is on the scene with the answers. This is a baby raptor five days old. Well, it's an emu five days old, but a baby raptor would look a lot like this. There's an idea that feathers first evolved to insulate a chick. Not a bad idea. So if we could go back in time, maybe we'd see a baby Deinonychus with feathers. And raptors had wraparound fingers with sharp claws. So a, a raptor could climb with its hands. And raptors also had a back-grabbing toe behind the main toes. And it could grab bark with that toe, too. In other words, what a raptor could do is climb. Now, why is that important? Because birds fly. How did they fly? First, you've got to get the bird up in the tree. And to get the bird up in the tree, you've got to have climbing hands and climbing feet. And raptors had those. Once your bird is in the tree, it can begin experimenting. It can uh, put its arms out and try gliding. And once it's gliding, that's a short step to powered flight. Hmm. That's one way of looking at it, I guess. But Larry Martin doesn't see it that way. Now, I know that Dr. Backer has suggested that maybe some dinosaurs are like this, and that maybe even a dinosaur like Deinonychus may have been able to climb trees and perch on limbs. I only want to point out to you that Deinonychus and I are really just about the same size. If you're comfortable with the idea of my climbing a tree and perching on a limb, then perhaps you should believe Dr. Backer. I think you can immediately see that it's not very well designed to climb a tree. Can you imagine trying to climb a tree on your, on your tippy toes with your uh, arms and legs held straight like that? And this animal can't change that posture. Its arms and its legs are fixed like this, so it would have to climb a tree like so. Uh, once it's up in the tree and it jumps out, it's not shaped like, oh, say, this model of Archaeopteryx here. Not a very great model, but it makes a point. You notice it's flattened this way so that when it's falling, it actually gets us lift from its body. You can imagine, you can imagine what would happen if this thing jumped out of the tree with its narrowly compressed body. It just falls straight down. So everything's still up in the air. Is there anything that we do know for sure? One thing, pelicans definitely look a lot like pterodactyls. No, I'm starting to see the resemblance. Hey, that's a double-decker bus. Very observant, Sam. And those are pigeons, and, and that's a little boy in a rugby shirt. <laughs> all right, all right. My point is, we're in London, England. We crossed the ocean to check in with Brian Gardner. That's him there, feeding pigeons in uh, Trafalgar Square. Gardner is trying to solve the same mystery as Bob Barker and Larry Martin. Where do birds come from? What is that? Looks like a big slab of liver. That's a sample of UMM. Excuse me? Unidentified mammal meat. See, Gardner questions the theory that birds and ancient reptiles are even related at all. So to test his hypothesis, he's comparing DNA samples from mammals, reptiles, and birds. DNA, that's like an animal's genetic fingerprint. <laughs> Man, you know a lot. Thanks. While the other experts are out getting dirty in the field, Gardner has been unearthing new evidence right here in the lab using this high-tech equipment. What he's found has led him to a very surprising conclusion about the origins of birds and dinosaurs. If dinosaurs and birds evolved from reptiles some 270 million years ago, then we would expect to see a great similarity between the DNA of birds and reptiles. But we don't. In fact, when we come to look, we find that the DNA of birds is closest to that of mammals. In other words, the other warm-blooded group. Therefore, birds are much more closely related to other warm-blooded animals than they are to reptiles. 
What this does is once and for all remove that lingering idea that dinosaurs are reptiles. They cannot be reptiles. They're warm-blooded relatives of birds. There's no way that we can imagine dinosaurs as reptiles, slow, ponderous creatures. They were warm-blooded bird ancestors. And so the search continues for the truth about the origins of birds. Would this eagle meet Deinonychus at his family reunion? The experts might never agree, at least not until the missing link is found between the past and the present. That's very poetic, Sam. Thanks. I'm a pretty deep guy, cuz. Well, you know, we've got all these different theories. There's Bob Bakker at the Thanksgiving table. So from shoulder to hip to knee to ankle, a turkey is a dinosaur. But Larry Martin can't stomach that idea. Birds evolved from reptiles separately from dinosaurs. They have their own separate lineage. And over in England, Gardner has a dine opinion on the subject, too. They were warm-blooded bird ancestors. But until Gardner can analyze some real dinosaur DNA, he's just speculating. But where's you going to get real dino DNA? Every theory has a missing link, Sam. That's why these guys stay on the case. <laughs> Good thing I found these missing links. I was getting hungry. Fire up the grill, Eddie. It's quitting time, Buster. Oh, man. Where'd you get those? Hey, um, what kind of sausage is that anyway? What do you think? It's turkey sausage. Are you still hungry? Come on. You ate most of the buffalo wings. That's not true. I had two. Oh, that is where your theory is flawed, cousin. You had about five or six. Well... Maybe I had three, but I didn't have five or six, Sam. Yes, you did, because you Honestly. know they're your favorites. Sam, go eat your sausage. 